Uh, we are going to talk about special steel moment frames, uh, S, uh, sp uh, special steel moment frames today. But we're going to focus on looking at an example, uh, actually two different connections. So today's lesson plan, we'll look a little bit at the building code requirements, what the AISC seismic provisions require for special moment frames. And we'll really focus on the next three items, what the pre-qualified connections document requires of you, and specifically applying in an example to the bolted flange plate and the welded unreinforced flange welded web or the WFW examples. We'll, at the end, we'll finish up with looking at calculating how you calculate the forces for your column splices and bases. And if we have time, I have provided supplementary material which really continues that determination of required strengths into the example uh, but if we have time at the end of the session today we'll actually go over some of that material but really the goal uh, aim is to get through the discussion of the columns uh, bases and splices and see where we are at that time as we know from the applicable building code so that's the, the 2012 IBC in this example 2015 is now out but wouldn't really affect this uh, particular example all that much uh, one of the things we look at for fr from the building code is the load combinations the requirements for steel design codes and that's meaning whether or not the AISC seismic provisions are required and a sort of simple way to look at that is if you're in seismic design category D, E or F then you have to use the seismic provisions if you're in seismic design categories B and C uh, it's kind of optional in that if you were to choose a system like a special moment frame or an intermediate moment frame or a special concentrically braced frame for that matter if you're in B and C, you still have to use the seismic provisions. However, there is a system listed in the, uh, uh, actually in the ASCE 7 table, uh, that's a structural steel system, not specifically detailed for seismic resistance. That gives you that R equals three system. It's the kind of behavior you would expect from a structural steel system without the seismic provisions and in that case you don't actually have to apply the seismic provisions but today we really are focusing on a special moment frame and if you have a special moment frame then you need to use the seismic provisions and we can see the familiar load combinations and we will focus on we will focus today on um, LRFD so uh, the ones on the left and we'll namely kind of use this one at some point in the example where uh, we'll look at 1.2 dead plus the earthquake uh, plus live and snow. So we will specifically use that load combination. In the building code, IBC does refer to then ASCE 7, and in this case, ASCE 710. The ASCE 716 has been released this summer, I believe, sometime, or late summer, early fall. Um, and there are significant changes there, but again, we're, we're kind of going with this path and we're focusing in on the requirements of ASCE 710. So this has things like the systems and limitations, meaning, you know, the height limits for ordinary intermediate and special moment frames. There actually are no height limits for special moment frames and that's what we're going to use today. But this is where you would calculate your seismic loads, where you get your amplified seismic load combinations from, and also those conditions when you need to use the amplified seismic load combinations. AISC will, the seismic provisions actually then add more cases where you use the amplified seismic load combinations. Namely today we'll look at how the column axial load has to be, uh, has to use these load combinations to, to for design. There's also other design requirements like checking for irregularities and how that affects the design of the rest of the structure. Analysis requirements mean do you have to do a dynamic analysis or you know can you just do a regular static analysis with the equivalent lateral force procedure, how to calculate your redundancy factors, those types of things are all in ASCE 710. This also has basically says the same thing that IBC does about when you need to use the AISC standards or specifically when the AISC seismic provisions have to be used. For this example, again, we're going to the 2010 versions of the uh, AISC 360, which is the main specification, and AISC 341, which are the seismic provisions. 
The main speci specification applies to all structural steel buildings. It has all the general steel requirements, how you calculate member and connection capacity, all those familiar things. The seismic provisions then are an additional requirement, so they're over and above the requirements in the specification. 